All right, guys, so I want to welcome you all to um, this morning's class on uh, market structure, how we get down in the lounge. Uh, I'm going to go over the steps that we do before any morning trade during the week. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you have any questions, feel free to jump in. We're a small group right now, so it's pretty much like a one-on-one, -on -one. all right? Okay, so the first thing that we do is, since I'm a day trader, meaning that I'd like to get in and out of the market that same day, okay? So I don't hold my trades for a couple of days. So the highest time frame that I look to is the one-hour chart. Okay, on the one hour chart um, on Ninja Trader platform, it plots for me the previous day's swing high and the previous day's swing low. Okay, but I still like to add the additional uh, support and resistance areas on those because it's a it's an area. It's not like the price to exact point. Okay. So if we're coming in on, this was uh, December 22nd, I would have had yesterday's swing high, which is my supply. And I go to the left and down to find where is my floor. All right. So I like to color code them so I know which one is which. You can make a template for that. So that's going to be my demand zone. And then I'm going to have, this is going to be my supply area or my supply zone, right? So I have them color coded. So that would have been uh, the previous day's swing high and swing low for going into Friday, right? And I, what I'm looking for is just a narrow down price, right? I'm looking to box that sucker in. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like we're preparing for Monday, okay? So that would be my uh, supply area. And this would be our demand, right? So those are our zones that we're looking to uh, trade from on the hourly chart, okay? Then once I do it on the 60-minute chart, then I start working down. So my next level down that I'm going to be looking at is my 15-minute chart. On my 15-minute chart, what I'm looking for now is I'm not going to con conflict with my zones of the hourly so I start using horizontal lines of areas where price uh, found uh, support. Support meaning that it stopped in reverse. So this would be a level of support. This would be a level of support, this one. And that would be it down to the demand zone. Okay. Now, once I get into my 15-minute chart, I'm looking for... What is price action doing at our hourly ceiling? Is it stepping down or it looks like it's going to go up, right? So I don't anticipate what it's going to do. I wait for it to happen because there is a particular symbol that I'm looking for that the market does every day. I'm looking for that impulse down, that pullback, and I'm looking to take the entry on the continuation side. OK, uh, there are two types of entries that we look look for. You have an aggressive. The aggressive is looking for uh, a reversal pattern on the pullback. So they're looking for uh, either a doji split top or hammer to happen here. And then an engulfing bar, a big, big red bar to be leaving away from this area. That's an ingress, aggressive entry. And then you have a conservative entry, which is the neckline break of the pullback area. So when this price came down, when this price came down, baby, 
Excuse me, guys. Can you come some water? Hot water? Yeah. Daddy, you want to? Yeah. Leave the door. I'm looking for this neckline break here. Uh, excuse me, that was that was my missus. I'm getting ready to get some, some coffee. Let y'all know that this is live. <laughs> get this neckline broke here. And then the entry would be here. Okay. My stop loss would be right above where I entered. On the conservatives. This is the conservative entry. This is the aggressive entry. On the aggressive entry, we put our stop loss right above the end of the pullback or the correction, okay? Now, downside target, I'm looking for these areas of support, okay? These areas of support, which is also the demand zone down here, right? Now, I'm also looking for, is there anything that could prevent price from reaching the demand zone? And if we look over here, we have price reject this area. So that would be my first target on the way down to the demand zone, which would be my final target. Okay. So when price action gets down here, I'm looking to see what does she do there? Is she going to bounce and come back up or is she going to break through? Okay. Now, meanwhile, we're already in this trade from up here. Okay. The stop loss is still here. So once we break this area of support, we should be moving our stop loss down to protect what we've already made. Okay. Now, do we enter in on the 15 minute chart? No, I do not. I go down to a smaller time frame because now I have my hourly in. I have my 15 minute chart marked up with resistance and support. Now I'm looking to get in as early as possible so that I can have a tight risk management. We're gonna pause for a second, guys. Is there anything that's unclear so far about prep working from the hourly to the 15 minute chart? You know, if I do the same thing, excellent. Okay. Master Ivan, you have any questions? No, sir. Let's get to me. Okay. So now I drop down to the five minute chart from the 15. So I'm bringing my top down information to the chart that I'm actually looking to pull the, the, the trade on. Okay. The five minute chart, the one minute chart, the two minute, one to five gets us into the trade earlier prior to hitting these points of support. Okay. So I still want to narrow in. I want to box in price so that when she makes a move down towards this uh, support area, I want to be in that trade. Okay? So I believe, in my, my humble opinion, I believe that the best indicators on the chart are your drawing tools and what you see. Okay? So I'm gonna go and grab this uh, trend channel tool. Most, most platforms have these tools on them. So I'm gonna grab that trend channel tool, which allows me to get right in prices face. I grab it from the high and I try to get at least one or two taps on top of the trend channel, okay? What that does for me is it allows me, it just brings out the trade or the possible trade because now I'm, I'm narrowing down the options in my mind. I'm saying, okay, if she does not break this top trend line, I'm looking for price to continue down, right? So I can enter this trade I can enter this trade here on the five minute or lower time frame, 
okay? And my stop loss can be right above the last place she tried to go up, okay? So now I have rules of engagement. If, if this next candle stays underneath this trend line and breaks this bottom line, bottom horizontal line, okay? I'm taking this trade, sell, I'm selling this trade down. Okay. Once this once this candle breaks this with a big red candle going down, I'm engaging and I'm going to sell it. This is going to be my first stop on the bus. This horizontal line is from the 15 minute chart. Okay. Once she breaks this and doesn't do a bounce, we continue down to the next area of possible where price action can bounce. This By this time on the ES market, we're already up four or five points, okay? So what we do not want to do is to risk to give this all back, seeing if we're trying to make this last support area, all right? Once she gets, once she starts breaking these support areas, we want to start putting, bringing that stop loss down to protect our profit. Okay. So as she's moving down and we're gaining profit, we want to move our stop loss down and follow her down to maximize that tree. Okay. At this point, you are in a free trade. Make sense, guys? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Wouldn't you want to, at that at that support area, wouldn't you, okay, well, I, you got the trend lines, but you, you that would be your method of waiting just to see what it does, because, I mean, I know it could go down or it could go it could consolidate there and go up because it looks like it's in the uptrend no what this right here yeah this whole move this whole move basically uh yeah this whole, right now it's in support this whole move is an uptrend currently right she's got an hourly resistance okay right so that's why i'm looking to my smaller time frame to tell me what is she doing at that hourly resistance? Got you. Yeah. The one minute chart is going to leave the building first. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if she's respecting this area and also to further that you, you know, stay in the lounge, you realize that this is a double top. Yes, I see that. That's the one minute or the five. That's the one minute chart. Yeah, you also, yeah, you, and then when you look further to the right, it's, it's still creating double tops, like close to pri where price is, right? Mm -hmm. These are triple tops, whatever you want to call it. Well, you know, I myself don't, I just look for what she's doing at the hourly. Okay, gotcha. Right? Because yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, you know, I do that too. A lot more bars for you to get caught up on the wrong side of the trade. That's right. So right. one minute chart is strictly for looking at patterns that are happening away from the one hour ceiling. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So until this pattern or this structure of the market gets broken, we are going down. Excellent advice. Got you. Yep. I agree. Thousand percent. Okay. Got you. So like I said, the one minute, the one, the one up to the five minute chart is going to leave the building first. The one minute she's starting to step down. Okay. If she was going to continue up to break this one hour ceiling, she would have took out the double top. Okay. So back to our five minute chart. I'm looking for that elephant bar to step into the market, to break this support right here on the five minute chart to take this trade down. Okay. <clears throat> on the ES market, 
you know, I'm looking for consistency. So I'm looking for one to two points a day. The distance between this break and that floor is two more than two points. Right? So that is our, our steps that we take to uh, get into a trade. So let's just kind of go over that, right? So uh, first, before you start your day, Right before you even open up your charts, look at four X Factory for news announcements. You do not want to get caught in a trade, and a news announcement is coming out. It's go you're going to get an influx of volume. Right. Second thing you want to do is your prep work on the hourly chart if you're a day trader, right? Hourly chart, get your demand zones in and supply. Know where you are. Know where you are. Okay. What's next? My question uh, on the one hour, uh, are we still plotting the London high and the London low? Yes, we are. Okay. Yes, we are. which is being covered by the one hour. Yes, we are. Okay, I got you. Good thought, good. Th thanks for bringing that up. That's, you know, when you when you have stuff that are automatically coming in now, you kind of forget to mention that. But my hourly, uh, my uh, previous day's indicator is on to let me know where that is. Okay, but we're going to put it in the writing in case somebody is following this. All right. Why I keep doing that? All right. So, uh, previous, or let me do this. So, you want to go London's? Uh, yeah. I, I guess we'd have to mark off the uh mark off the uh the the uh volume the volume time frames I guess like the 9 30 open wait from from their time open well which would be what uh on on the chart would be what 10 10 a.m I guess uh their time is that correct I can't remember no, it's 10, um, 15. I, uh, Go ahead. I uh Ninja Trade is a very powerful platform. Yeah. Um I want to try to have as less thinking stuff on my thing as possible. Okay. So uh there's an ind indicator that you can use that will give me it actually gives me the time slot. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, nice. It gives me the time slot that I trade. Uh, okay. This indicator can be found. It's a free indicator. It can be found uh, pretty much Google it. And you see the start time. Mm -hmm. My start time, my end time, it'll plot it for me. Nice. Right. So I look for a trade between 945 and 1230. Gotcha. So it highlights uh, and I love that. I love that question, by the way. See, I like to build off of questions. You know, I don't want to be a, a, an instructor, just be talking and y'all, you know what I'm saying? I like the feedback. So that's a great question. Uh, this time zone here is the U.S. opening. And that's the time frame that I study the most. Yeah. 
You have a London time frame, which starts at 3 a.m. in the morning, which, you know, uh, 3 a.m. Yeah. to 11, 12 o'clock. I'm not up that early. Then you have your Asian session. That Asian session, that volume is so low, it, it, it's like watching paint dry. Yeah. Okay. So great question. Uh, time zone, 945 to 1230. Okay. We grabbed the previous day from London. We grabbed London's high and London's low because the U.S. session is going to challenge those uh, high and low. Okay. Yeah. So I grabbed the hourlies high and low, supply and demand, my 15 minute chart. I'm looking for support and resistance. Okay. First, before you start, always check Forex Factory so you're not trading or engaging in a red house, right? You want to wait until that red house, uh, they, uh, the market responds to that red house. You just want to kind of wait, right? So we get London's high and low, okay? Then we get um, the weekly, all right? Which is the yo's in the house. Right. Yes, which is pretty much covered by us grabbing that supply and demand zone from the hourly chart, right? You want to stay as close to price and support and resistance supply and demand as close to price as possible because if you go out any further, you're not going to be able to take a trade because you'll be in the middle. Amen. You want to be near a support or, or a supply or demand zone support or resistance. You want to box in price. So when she breaks out, right, you want to be ready for the breakout. And plus, by boxing price in, it gives you a tighter stop loss. Okay? So after we get the highs and the lows in, right, we want to continue to box in price. Box in price. Right? So you go down to a smaller time frame so you can start to see uh, uh, the patterns that are setting up. Okay, so in Friday's thing, the market went down into a demand zone, right? She goes down into a demand zone. How do I know that's a demand zone? She's not putting in any more bars below this zone. Okay, so now what I'm looking for, what are you looking for, Master B? I'm looking for evidence that that area is going to hold. What does that mean? That means this. Let me get my uh, arrow. That means that the next series of bars that come down in here cannot break this, this zone. So that's telling me in my mind now we have a floor. Okay, technical terms, demand zone or support, right? Because this last bar that came down did not take out the low, this area is an area of support. I'm looking for the first elephant green bar, right? Because if you look at this bar, it totally engulfed the body of the previous bar. Okay, that makes sense? Yep. All right, because we know that the institution is the only ones that can make a bar that size. So on the close of this bar, I'm going to enter in for a buy during my time session, okay? I enter in this trade, I'm looking for first target because this is the area of resistance that could stop price from reaching back to my supply zone. I cannot be a deer caught in the head like looking for the supply zone where then there are obstacles in my way that might turn it around. That makes sense. Okay. 
So we enter this trade. Now, where does our risk management go? Well, since this bar came down first and then started to go up, once it started smoking green, my stop loss goes underneath that wick. Now that's less than two ticks. She goes up, I'm now in profit, right? She comes back down. This bar right here would, I'm gonna be honest, this bar right here would have made me nervous as that. As soon as I started seeing this was not a continuation, my stop loss would have been probably about right there because I'm not giving back profit that's been made. That's, not, that's just me. I'm not doing it, right? So I didn't make first target, no problem. I'm looking for a second trade. Then she comes back down into half the position of this elephant bar and she puts in a double bottom. Okay. Now what I'm looking for, I'm getting excited because I'm looking for my second trade. Once this guy starts popping green, I'm in this trade again. One more time, stop loss underneath. This time we hit target. Okay. Once I go green and my daily goal has been hit, I'm done. Any questions? Pause. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay. So let's let's talk about some of the the issues that we run into. Right? Some of the issues that I have been experiencing is holding a bad trade. Okay? But over the years that I've seen, I've seen that we are getting caught up with trying to make a million dollars in one trade. That's what I think. You know what I'm saying? If you can make, if you can go negative $200, then you can make a positive $200 getting out when the trade is not going in your favor. If the price action, you got into this trade because you thought price was going to go up, okay? And it is coming back and it's going back the other way. You need to be out of that trade because the reasoning for getting in that trade is no longer there. You know? Yeah. This is um, wash, rinse, and repeat. It's, this, it's the same thing that I do every day. If we go to the previous day, I'm doing the same thing. I want to make my thing simple and boring. Same thing, right? Previous day, my time slot. This is my time slot, right? Going into the 10 o'clock hour, I go over to the left and up because I want to find where is my ceiling. That's my ceiling. Prior going into what? The 930 US Open. Right? From the point that I sit down at my terminal, I'm looking over, because now I got to find the floor. I'm looking over to the left of the chart. I'm finding out all our answers are to the left of the chart. You want to know the cheat sheet? Look to the left of the chart, right? Over and down. This is my current floor going into the US Open. Right? So I have my ceiling and my floor going into the US Open. Okay, we get an elephant engulfing bar at the 10 o'clock hour. I'm she breaks structure. Okay. I'm left-handed, so I think on the right side of the brain. Struck market structure confused the heck out of me. 
But when I put structure in front of market, I it clicked. The structure of the market that's form, forming has been broken. Okay? I'm mm -hmm. in this trade. I think uh, the thing that usually catches me out there is uh, <clears throat> impatience and not being sure when the market will reverse. And, and uh, sorry, that's my son. And um, I think the other thing that I, I'm constantly disciplining myself to do is waiting for the candle. It's why close. Waiting for the candle to close. Waiting for the candle to close. Okay. What is the only thing that we have in control? The only thing that we I'm, have... I'm sorry to say my son just called me. Go ahead, I'm listening. What is the only thing we have in complete control? Do you have any control? Yeah, stop, Lord. That's right. So what is what is the maximum amount are you willing to risk on a trade? Once you find out that goal, what is the maximum amount you're willing to risk on that trade? You do not have to wait for that bar to close. She breaking, she's breaking market structure, right? So I'm going to risk one point to make one to two. It's your risk reward. If your risk is more, if your reward is more than your risk, I get in the trade. You're not risking more than what you're willing to accept or lose. So, you know, your prep work is already telling you if this four gets broke, get in the trade. That makes sense? <laughs> yep. Well, we're going to pause it right there. I don't want to give too much out on uh, YouTube land. So you guys mm -hmm. have any feedback? Um, any questions? You know, I want you, I want you guys to act. Like, you know, this is the first time you see what would be some of the questions that would be lingering in your mind, you know, about. Yeah, I just got to um, keep looking at it and just be cognizant of the reversals, pullbacks and reversals. Like pullbacks sometimes, you know, that could turn into, into a reversal. So. I'm trying to train my mind to understand those moments when price wants to do exactly that uh, reverse. I mean, I'm seeing it more and more, but yeah, it's, it's uh, one of my challenges. How is your prep work? I do the prep work uh, pretty much exactly the same. Start from the hour chart uh -huh. uh, and work my way down. And she's on the one minute, looking for uh, market structure on the five minute, pretty much look for the zones on the 15 and the hour, to be honest with you. But all my, my, my primary setup is setting up my uh, areas on the one hour, the London high, the London low, uh, look for the 15 minute or the one hour candle, whether it be supply and demand, depending on what, where price is at. And, um, I've been very, very consistent. It's just the daggone reversals and uh, pullbacks that tend to catch me out there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna st hold on. I'm gonna stop the recording. I want to thank you guys for coming out for this morning's class. I'm gonna stop the recording now. <laughs>